Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is gonna explain to you exactly what plants and exactly what varieties of plants you should be growing this year, 2023. Now, everything on this list has been personally selected by me, and pretty much all of it is what I grow and am growing this year. So everything is uh, selected with a focus on storage capability, nutrient density, ease of growing, uh, and all of these various factors. So you can rest assured everything on here is worth its weight. So let us begin. First thing is potatoes. Now these are Kennebec potatoes. I recommend Kennebecs. They're a white potato. Also the Ketadine is really good and the Yukon Gold. And those three store really well. This is from the basement. I still have tons of potatoes just like this. They're just starting to sprout. But uh, this is gonna last at least another one or two months. It's still rock solid perfectly fine to eat so they last all winter long potatoes are the highest calorie for work input of any of the crops so you want to be growing potatoes you can survive big time on potatoes full of vitamins and minerals so long as you leave the skin on and all the good stuff definitely be growing potatoes and those three three varieties are the ones you're going to want to choose now the next thing on the list is sweet potatoes sweet potatoes are very just like regular potatoes very rich in calories and vitamins and minerals and their storage capability is off the charts okay this is one i grew this past year and it's the orange flesh type i just went to the co-op and got the organic sweet potatoes and i'm going to sprout them how i'll make the video here in another week or two uh, this isn't a special expensive variety just go to your co-op and get the sweet potatoes okay now this one is from September these ones guys are from two years ago not last September the September before that and they're just starting to sprout a little bit but they are still rock solid and they're still totally edible and this is a Japanese white flesh variety okay so the storage capability of sweet potatoes is totally off the charts so for that reason alone, I highly recommend it. Next thing is going to be peas, guys. You can shell peas and you can can them, you can freeze them, you can dehydrate them, keep them shelf stable, and they're full of fiber and proteins and vitamins and minerals. Very good for you. So I like to grow two different varieties, uh, two different types. The tall uh, type that, that gets six feet or so that you plant in the springtime. That's going to be the tall telephone is my favorite and the sugar snap pea. The tall telephone is a shelling pea. So you shell it and then freeze or can the peas. The sugar snap is the classic, uh, you know, gets about six feet tall and you eat the whole pod. Now these are the ones you plant in the spring because they take a really long time, uh, or they take a longer time to grow. But then for the fall garden, uh, we'll be planting, I'll also plant some of these in the spring, uh, dwarf varieties. Now I like the Lillian's caseload. It's a great shelling pea and they only get a foot or two tall. And uh, so they, they, uh, are much earlier than the other ones. The other one is gonna be the sugar bond, and these are ones that you can just eat the whole pod, okay? So these are the four varieties that I like to grow, and I grow a boatload of peas. As you will see, I have a pea shelling machine, which makes it uh, a lot simpler. Next thing on the list is beans, guys. Beans are your friend, full of fiber, full of nutrients, energy, vitamins, minerals, all that stuff. And they store, once you dry them, they store like this uh, pretty much indefinitely. I mean, definitely for a couple of years, no problem. And uh, the ones that you grow yourself are light years beyond the kind that you get from the store. Just the regular navy beans and all that stuff, no. These are my absolute all-time favorite bean, and they are the Good Mother Stollard bean. Very delicious. There's, there's no other bean that compares, and they're beautiful too. But there's no other bean that compares, in my experience, to the flavor of these. All you need is just a little bit of olive oil and, and uh, uh, garlic and onions, salt and pepper. That's it. Uh, so the next dry bean I'm going to say is the Anasazi bean. This is also called the 1,500-year-old cave bean. And uh, these are the ones, supposedly, that they found in a cave in a, in a cl clay jar sealed with pitch and everything, 1,500 years old. Uh, they are more like a pinto bean so think more like pinto bean that's what these are good for the, the anasazi bean very vigorous growth and they store a long time uh, as far as green beans uh, i like to do either rattlesnake beans or these bush these dragon tongue beans these are like snap beans that you would eat like green beans these are the varieties that i like next thing is going to be corn guys there's two different types of corn there's the sweet corn and then there's the flint and drying corn and uh, if you're doing like the three sisters or whatnot, that is only the flint dry corn, okay? Not sweet corn. Uh, 
So for sweet corn, my favorite one is going to be the Fisher's Earliest Corn. That's uh, really delicious, and it uh, matures in a short amount of time compared to the other ones. And then for the flint or dry corn, number one I recommend is the glass gem corn. It gets about nine feet tall, usually has about two ears per stalk, and you can grind it, you can dry it and grind it into a really nice cornmeal like I have. I make grits out of it all the time and stuff. Uh, and then the next one is going to be like a painted mountain. Now, this one is also really good, especially if you have a short season. If you're in the north, these only get about four feet tall. So they don't spend all that time um, creating the infrastructure. Like the glass gem will take 120 days, pretty much. These will not take nearly that long, 90 to 100. So uh, for shorter seasons. Next thing is going to be the garlic, guys. You got to get the garlic in your life. It is like medicine, medicine food. Yes, let thy food be thy medicine. And uh, you can just go to, you can either, one of two ways, you can either go and spend a bunch of money on seed garlic from uh, catalogs and stuff. That's one way to do it, and that's great. And I wouldn't mind it if you sent me some of that, definitely, if you have some good varieties. But what I have been doing is uh, go to the co-op. Uh, I did this a number of years ago, and I grow from the previous stock each year now. So you can just go to the co-op and get the organic stuff and plant that in the fall, as I've made videos about. Next thing is going to be onions. So garlic and onions go hand in hand, medicine food, guys. Now, the two best that I have found for storage and flavor are the Australian brown, which is an intermediate day. It's a white, sort of yellowish onion. Uh, not sweet. They're, it's very pungent. And then the Weathersfield Red. And these are both long, well, this one is long day, this one is intermediate day. So watch my video I made about onions to learn more about it. But these are the two varieties. I still got a boatload of them down in the uh, basement. And it's, uh, you know, middle of February already. And they're still, I'm still eating them. So, wonderful. Next thing is going to be peppers, guys. Peppers is actually very important. Not just for, don't think just bell peppers or super hot peppers. The, what I do is create flavorings because I cook from scratch every single day. All my food is from scratch and I make, I grow as much of it as I can. And so I'm all about the flavorings. And so I will grow the poblano pepper and uh, also the uh, Hungarian paprika. And I will dry them and smoke them on oak wood with a little bit of garlic and onions. I'll smoke them and then dehydrate them. And man, whoa, if you could smell this, it just smells like campfire with a little bit of sweetness of the paprika. It's so delicious. Uh, and then I will grind them as needed because they last longer and better like this. I'll grind them as needed and I've got this delicious uh, smoked seasoning. And I do a number of different kinds. This is Hungarian paprikas. These are the smoked poblanos. So it changes the whole flavor profile of your cooking. As you're, as you're uh, cooking, you can throw in some of this one day and some of the other the other day and it changes up everything. Also, I make a smoked poblano fermented hot sauce. Guys, it is off the chain delicious, okay? And it's fermented. It's There's no vinegar. It's alive. All right? It's the real deal. Next thing is going to be the cabbage, guys. Uh, I love to make sauerkraut. I also love to make fresh eating cabbage. Now, for fresh eating, Gloria Weinkusen is a very good one. Very fast. So you can print, plant this one in the spring, and it will uh, form a nice dense head that, that is uh, compact relative to the size it takes up. And uh, it, it's pretty fast. But for the fall time, and this is a good fresh eating one, also for sauerkraut. But uh, for the fall time, man, this Brunswick cabbage, they're much, much bigger, but they're very cold hardy. You plant them in about, uh, when we plant the fall garden stuff, and uh, they ripen. They can take really hard frost, no problem. And this has made the most delicious sauerkraut that I've ever had. This, this year in particular, it was really good because it got kissed by some, I mean, it got straight up snowed on before I harvested them. And uh, yeah, the Brunswick's the best for the sauerkraut and also fresh eating too. Next thing is the collard greens, guys, and you got to get the greens in you. And uh, collard greens, way better than spinach in the sense that there's more nutrients and it doesn't bolt in the heat. It's way more tolerant to heat, to hot and cold fluctuations. I don't even grow spinach anymore because it's so disheartening when it just bolts immediately. Uh, so collard greens are delicious and very nutritious. The most nutritious of all, every bit as nutritious as kale. Uh, now another couple greens that I grow is the mustard greens. I like the new wave. It's very easy, very simple to grow. I've never had an issue. And then the showstopper in the garden is the Vulcan red Swiss chard. It, everyone thinks it's rhubarb, but it gets huge and big, thick stalks, and it's just so beautiful. I mean, it's an ornamental plant as well. 
Next thing I know you've been waiting for is the tomatoes. Now listen up guys, this has come over much experience and trial and error and all of this. And the, the only three kind that I grow now are the Cherokee purple, which is the most delicious slicing tomato, fresh eating tomato ever. And it's unbelievable. Uh, not that vigorous of a plant though, so you gotta plant many of them. But then uh, for sauces is gonna be the Roma. Roma is what I, uh, I love it. it totally, Romas are not so much for fresh eating. Once you cook them down, it's something about cooking it that unlocks the flavor profile. And that's that, the Roma is that classic, uh, you know, pizza sauce or pasta sauce taste. That's the classic sauce paste tomato. It's also the one that I will uh, make this shelf stable paste out of uh, this powder. I will dehydrate the tomatoes, the Romas, and then powder them and uh, it's shelf stable tomato paste. Just rehydrate it with a few uh, drops of water. Also, guys, here's the, the, the dom of them all, okay? The purple bumblebee. I don't know why I'm showing you that, but purple bumblebee tomato from Baker Creek Seeds. It is the most vigorous of all the tomato plants, super high yielding and very delicious. Now I ferment the tomatoes, look, September 10th is when I started fermenting these. These are just sit out on the shelf in the basement. There's no refrigeration or anything required and they are so delicious. Ask anyone that has uh, made them because of my uh, fermented tomato video that I made a few weeks ago or a couple of months ago and they are absolutely off the, the charts delicious. And they're fresh, it's, it's middle of February and these are fresh tomatoes basically. I mean, they're fermented. The only thing that's in here is basil, garlic, sea salt and water, that's it. Next thing is cucumbers, guys. I love to make pickles. I make these pickles, they're fermented. There's no vinegar, so watch my video on that. And these are still good. They just sit out on the shelf in the basement, still nice and crunchy. And I use the Chicago pickling cucumber for this variety, or for this purpose. Stays really nice and uh, uh, firm through the pickling process. Very thin skins, that's what you want. For the carrots, I grow the new Kuroda carrot because they're more stocky than the other ones and they can power through the tough soil. So they're way more lenient on things. I don't like growing the carrots where you have to have super soft, fluffy, peat moss type soil that's two feet deep. Man, just grow these and it really hardly matters what kind of soil you're growing it in. They will produce. Even the grow bags, they grow really well in that. For the beets, I just grow the Detroit Dark Red and they have always produced very well. Nice sugary sweet beets, not a problem. Next thing is gonna be squash. Guys, squash are full of nutrients and they store all winter long if you choose the right variety. Now, if you're limited on space, you're gonna to wanna to choose something like the acorn squash or the butternut butter bush squash. And that's gonna be more of like a bush variety, but the acorn squash only stores about two or three months as compared to the Tahitian melon squash from Baker Creek Seeds. That will store nine months to a year, no problem. I still have many of them downstairs. But be prepared, those Tahitian melon squash will get 30 feet long and they each vine can produce 50 or 100 pounds of food. They're incredible. And here's a few variety of flowers I like to use to attract pollinators and to repel pests. I love the Cracker Jack Marigold. These are the ones, the Cracker Jack are beautiful. R real, real soft foliage, but br nice big blooms. As opposed to like the Orange Hawaii. The Orange Hawaii is just a big plant all around. It gets three or even four feet tall with tons of these giant orange blooms on them. But there's a lot more foliage. That's a bigger plant than the Cracker Jacks. Also, I love the nasturtiums, guys. I plant those everywhere that I can. And the showstopper that I get the most questions about is the giant Indiana coxcomb. And this, when people see that, that huge, vibrant, brilliant red thing, they're just like, what is that? It's really incredible. So, okay guys, that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comments what varieties you are growing and why. And uh, if you need any clarifications or questions, let me know. Give the video a thumbs up, share it with somebody so they can plan their upcoming uh, uh, stuff because guys, the season is on its way.